church family, but our community family. And, uh, and having a great time of worship, and then the fish fry and games and, and things to follow. So uh, thank you for coming and be a part of it. And so uh, I'm going to let Natalie, if you would, let's stand for the reading of Scripture. And then... Uh, oh, yes. Thank you, Lord, for the breeze. After that, I will lead us in prayer. I'm sorry. I can't. That's um, okay. Today we're reading from Acts chapter... Two. Oh. Um, verse 46 and 47. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke the bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Amen. Oh. We got one more. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people, and the Lord added to their number daily who were being saved. I didn't see Brother Keith. I said, I'd pray. I see you right there, Brother Keith. I looked and didn't see you. If you would, lead us in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Father, and all that has come out, Father, to hear your word, Father. We ask you to bless you from here. Father, we know that there are many loved ones here that you keep your touch. Loved ones on the far from home, sick and unable to be with us, Father. We just ask you to bless you from here. Lord, forgive us each one as, as of our trespasses and, and so we can see this day. Bless our pastor, Father, as we bring to work with you. Forgive us as we bring to work with you. Amen. Amen. Well, traditionally, this is what we do at our church, so we're going to do it here as well, so we can kind of um, spread out for just a few minutes, greet each other, hug on each other. We'll do that for about three or four minutes, and then uh, Bill will lead us in worship this morning. Yes.
I've got to welcome him and he and Kathy back. Uh, they've been going on about a three week vacation and they got back Friday back down this way and we are so happy to have y'all back. All right. Well, he ought to be able to lead us like something else because it's been three weeks. All right. Hey, it is good to be back. We really did miss y'all. We're glad you missed us. <laughs> yes. We love y'all and we truly did miss you. My wife asked me, was I going to say something this morning? And that's about all I've got is we missed you and we love you. If you have a hymn, we'll turn to page number, I believe it's 426. 426.
You're warm out there this morning. Makes you appreciate that air conditioning. Amen. <laughs>
<laughs> Not me. I don't ever talk. Is it offering time? Oh, it's offering time. All right, if our ushers will come forward. We're really glad y'all are back. Yeah. I, I'm not having to worry about all these things. I was relaxing a little bit. I ain't had those. Uh, oh, let me tell you. She wants to perform. We're too. taking up a. We're going to take up an offering, but this is an offering for our church family. All right? It's not for the visitors. It's not for the community. If, if you feel led, that'd be totally up to you. But this is for our church family because we're not having church at our home. So do not feel obligated. And that's I, I'm, I'm sincere, and that's from my heart. You hear me? Amen. It is not for you. It's for our church family. Just so you know. Um, God just, God's done some amazing things. Amen. And He continues to do amazing things at our church and, and in our church family. And, and, and we just want to be faithful to Him. Amen. And all that is done for us. And so, uh, please, uh, please know our heart in this. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dan, will you offer our prayer, please, sir? Father, thank you for this wonderful day and the blessings that come with that. Thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here in a beautiful setting, in the community, to fellowship, to sing praises to you, to worship you, to feed on your word. Let that word apply to our heart. Thank you for this time that we may come together and return to you a portion of what you blessed us with. You're the giver of all good things. Please multiply these gifts in the building of your kingdom. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. service under a tent, raise your hand. That's pretty good man. There's a few of you had. How many of you had to sit in one of them old hot churches with one of them funeral home fans? At least. How many of you were baptized in a pond? That far back as I can remember now. Uh, we do take so many things for granted. Bill, they walk to church. How many of you walk to church? There we go. We got some. How about this morning? How about who's going to serve at church? Say that again. Who's going to serve at church? 
Wood burning stove in the church. Y'all hear that? Have you ever had a wood burning stove in the church? <laughs> and have you, how many of you had to run in water at the church? Did any of you have to carry water? That's running water right there. <laughs> she said that's running water. You had to run down there and get it. <laughs> <laughs> better not have a hole in your bucket when you go. Okay, we're going to end this portion of the worship service with page number 425. You can sit. You may want to stand. I don't know how long he's going to preach. You know, you, you make that decision yourself. Page number 425.
all the conveniences of home. How many wish y'all had the conveniences of home? Well, that's not always going to be where we're at. You know, Jesus called us to go into the street and minister. Yeah, the, the streets, I can't walk. Well, I can carry you. Because we're going to go to Belize again this summer, I think. Yeah, are you going to take me? Or are you going to take Chester? Well, I don't know. It depends who of y'all fight and get in the sack. Because I'm not taking a padded suitcase. <gasps> I'm not a padded suitcase. No, you only get two in a carry-on. And you fit in the carry-on. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't need a padded suitcase. You need a padded... No, you're going to get in that bag right there. Watch, I'm going to show you right now. Kathy, don't let her cram me in the sack. <laughs> you don't hear her? Well, Digger got to ride in his own chair. I've seen pictures on Facebook. Well, what are you doing on Facebook? I snuck your thumb in the bag. <laughs> She's it's my granny in the sack again. Can you say that to me? Because I don't feel welcome. Bye. 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 try to sing something. I can see this while it moves. I can see. Go right ahead.
remove some of this. I'll have a mess up here if I don't. All right. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we just come to you and just praise you today for your grace, mercy. Thank you that we can say it is well with our soul, not because of what we've done, but because of what you've done, Father. Because of your blessings, because of your salvation, Father. And Lord, we just praise you today for all that you have done. We thank you for the opportunity to, to be here today, Father, under this tent. Thank you for all of those that have made this possible, Father. Lord, I thank you for those that have helped put up the tent, those that have made preparations, Lord, those that are even overworking right now. Lord, defeat us afterwards. Lord, we just pray your blessings on every single one that's here. And we ask that you just have your way today, Father. Lord, I ask you to speak through me. Use me, Father, as your instrument. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to each and every heart and life that's here today, Father. That, Lord, if there be one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, they'd come to know you. And Lord, for those that do, Lord, I pray they'd be encouraged today. Lord, if there's one here that does know you, and Lord... They are not walking with you right now, Lord. I pray that you would just uh, encourage them to come back to you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 A little bit. How many of you have your Bible today? Oh, that's not your Bible. I've got mine. <laughs> See, we're used to, in our church, we a lot of times have the Scripture up on the screen. And a lot of times we don't bring our Bible, do we? We read it off a screen. We, and, and look, I, I'm all for technology. I love technology. If you know me, I'm, I, I do a lot of technology <laughs> stuff, okay? And so I'm not saying that, that technology is not good. But sometimes when we don't have those technologies, we are sometimes at a loss, aren't we? I mean, y'all like the technology of air conditioning. I promise you, you'll appreciate it more when you get home this evening. Amen? Amen. It, I love technology. But also, there's something about reading God's Word. Amen. And reading from God's Word. And so, I, I have it. Not, I've not got my Dory coloring book. That's just there. But I do have the Word of God here. Amen. The title of the message today is In or Out of the Box. And I'm going to talk to you about being... How many of you have heard the, the expression, Think Outside the Box? What is what is that? What do you think of when you hear that phrase? Think outside the box. Think or act outside the box. What does that mean? Something different than the normal. Something different than the normal. Go beyond your established perimeters. Go beyond your established perimeters. Wow, that's a nice. There, there you your, go. Out of your comfort zone. Out of your comfort zone. <laughs> I think that's exactly. All of those are are, are great ideas about what it means to be out of the box. And as we look at our scriptures this morning, we're going to look at, at, at the prophet Isaiah, from, and then we're going to look at the gospel of Matthew, okay? And when we look at that, I think we're going to be, God's word is going to challenge us and, and to follow God's example, because I think our God that we serve, I think the God of the universe is a God that is outside the box, and I think if we're going to serve Him and we're going to follow Him like He's called us to serve Him and follow Him, we're going to have to think outside the box. We're going to have to serve outside the box. Because in the boxes, as Ariane said, in the box is our comfort zone. <coughs> but I want to tell you, you can't totally serve God in your comfort zone. God's going to call you to do something that's a little different than what you're used to. Kind of like going to the park for a church service. Amen. <laughs> having, a, having a service under the tent, having a, ha, having a, a opening it up, that's out of the box thinking. And I'll tell you, my church people will tell you, I'm an out of the box kind of thinker. Yes. Okay? I'll tell you, this was my idea today. Okay? But they got on board with it. They saw that, hey, there's something we can do. This is an opportunity for us to do something different. Amen. Out of the box. And so, as we look at that, I want you to see Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1 through 5 says this. It says, oh... Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Think of that. You that have no money, come and buy and eat. That is outside the box. Amen. 
Because inside the box says you've got to have money to buy something to eat. He says, look, come to the waters and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what, is, what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your eye and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commandment for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. That's outside the box thinking, folks. Mm -hmm. But before we get to outside the box, I want to share with you the first point in your, in your outline. If you got a bulletin, it is thinking inside the box. Look, before we can think outside the box, I want you to think about what it looks like to think inside the box. We define what it is to think outside the box, so how would you define thinking inside the box? The exact opposite. Inside the box is we have, we have this comfort zone. We have this place that we stay. It's the norm that we walk in day to day, every day, ongoing and continually. It's the idea that when you turn water on on your faucet, water's going to come out, right? How many of you experienced that it didn't happen quite that way yesterday afternoon around here? Right? Because the water went out for a little bit because there was a problem. How many of you, I want to tell you how, how so inside the box we think, how many of you still flip light switches on when the electricity's off? <laughs> I do the same thing. I can say the electricity's off and 10 seconds later I'll flip a light switch on. Why? Because it's inside the box thinking, because it's so normal and natural for us, right? And when those things don't happen, we get our feathers all ruffled sometimes. We get our, our, our thought process goes way the wrong direction so many times because we're so used to thinking inside the box. See, inside the box is a place where you know what is possible and what is predictable. Thinking inside the box is a place where you're not surprised or where you can exercise faith, So, but you can't exercise it totally because, man, to go to, to exercise a lot of faith, man, that's outside the box. How many of you have prayed and expected God to work a miracle in your life? See, miracles are outside the box thinking. Miracles and God working in our life and doing extraordinary things, that's outside the box. And so many times, that's not where we live. Oh, it's where we go occasionally when we have a need. Man, if something happens in our life, man, we have a health issue, somebody has a health problem, man, we have a car wreck, man, something happens to our family, we go outside the box at those moments, but most of the time we stay inside our box. Most of the time we take and we have God in our box, and as long as God works inside that box we put Him, we're okay. And unless we need God to get out of His box to work, man, we're just all right. We're okay and we're content with God staying inside the box. But when we need something, we expect God to get out of the box. We expect God to do something. We expect God to, to do something miraculous and we expect Him to then get out of that box. See, I don't know about you, but I believe, like many of you, intend to believe that we, most of us, stay inside this box. Listen, when we look at Scripture, Scriptures are filled with, with accounts of, and stories about what took place. And I want to tell you, almost every one of those times is outside the box. When the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea, when they returned into when they were crossing the Red Sea and, they, and God dried that thing up and they walked across it, can I tell you, was that inside or outside the box thinking? Man, that was outside the box because a, a, a river's not supposed to dry up and be able to walk across a dry land, is it? No. But I want to tell you, before God worked a miracle, 
Can I tell you, most of them were thinking inside the box because when they got to the river, what did they say? What are we going to do now? They thought inside the box. God worked a miracle, then they thought outside the box. But can I tell you, it wasn't long after they got across the Red Sea that they started thinking inside the box again. They went back to the old way of thinking. They went to the easy way of thinking. They went to the natural way of thinking. See, they seemed to forget that God's gracious hand parted the waters and sent them over there allowing them to escape on dry land. Think of the best indicators that, went, that they went back to. They went back to everything that was natural and normal for them. Can I tell you, God is not a natural and normal God. Amen. When He calls you to faith, you can't continue in the natural and normal that you used to be in. But I want to tell you, that's the way we're set. Isn't that what we tend to fall back to when we're not careful? Absolutely it is. I want to tell you, if you're here, say amen because it sounds like you're not here. Amen. All right. It's amen or oh me. If there's a good spot for an amen and you don't say amen, I'm going to take it as an oh me and I'm going to keep going there. All right? We think inside the box, and that's what they did too. Think about it. Every one of them knew that they had left Egypt. They were fleeing from the enemy. Pharaoh was after them. They were fleeing from the enemy. They went across the Red Sea. Every one of them knew when they left Egypt that they were leaving food and water and comforts. Right? But I want you to think about it. An indicator that shows that they went back to the wrong way of thinking is this. When they got over, listen to what Exodus 17.3 says. It says, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? See, look, we knew we were leaving food and water, but when they got over there and discomfort hit and things become challenging, what did they do? They then complained that they didn't have... Water. They complained because they didn't have water. Now, I'm going to ask you, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have complained long ago that you didn't have some water? You see, folks, our default is to go back to complaining and being miserable. And that is inside the box. It's inside the box. We've got to be, we're called to think differently, folks. Look over in Matthew, if you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. I know it's a little lengthy, but listen, it'll be worth it in the end, I promise. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13. When Jesus heard it, he departed from them by boat to a, a, des a desert place. By himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. He was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert, deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Verse 17, and they said to him, we have only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them to me. When he had commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke it and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up the twelve basketfuls of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Listen, does it surprise you that the disciples are looking at the crowd and say, look, Lord, they have compassion. They said, look, Lord, they've got to be hungry. They've been following you for a while. It's getting late in the day. Send them away so they can go get food. They, like Jesus, were having compassion on the people. But I want you to think about this. You think about this. The disciples are very practical and very logical. How many of you can relate to that statement this morning? I'm practical and I'm logical. Can I tell you, I am as well. 
But I want to tell you this, many times your practicality and your logicalness will get you in trouble with God. Amen. Why? Because practically logical fits inside a box. And God won't fit inside a box. See? What did Jesus tell them? He says, they don't need to go away. What you need to do is you need to feed them. Now, how many of you brought enough food to feed 500 people today? How many of you brought enough food to feed 200 people today? So what was it like? What he, Jesus is saying, look, you need to feed 5,000. And they said, look, we didn't even bring our lunch ourselves. You know how they got the five loaves two fish, right? They went and found a boy in the crowd that had it. One boy in 5,000 people was the only one to think, I'm going to be long enough to be there long enough to eat. You see, Jesus tells them, can we forgive the disciples for thinking inside the box? I think we can a little bit, but it's because they were practical and logical. <laughs> But I want to tell you, Jesus was thinking outside the box. See, when we think inside the box, we have our comfort in our box. When we see that, we don't have to put much effort forward in the box. Can I tell you, you can coast inside the box. You can coast in life. You can coast in your relationship with God when you stay inside the box. But I want to tell you, you won't continue to find God if you stay in the box. You won't continue to serve God faithfully like He wants to call you to inside the box. See, inside the box, you don't need a Savior because you can do it yourself. Inside the box, there's a multitude of ways to heaven, not just one. Inside the box, hell's not a reality. See, inside the box, God is all lovey and dovey and would never send anybody to hell. See, inside the box, everybody gets to go to heaven. See, inside the box is the thinking that the enemy wants to keep us in. So let's move now to thinking outside the box. The scriptures may be Filled with people also that are outside the box thinkers. And look, that's the longest point. Give me a few minutes and I'll be through with the next two, alright? Scripture's filled with command after command by God to think outside the box. Listen to what he tells us there in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. He said, look, my way of thinking is different than your way of thinking. Your way of thinking is inside the box. My way of thinking is outside the box. Your way of working is inside the box. My way of working is outside the box. Because my ways are higher than your ways. What did God do about Moses? He told Moses, I want you to think about how outside the box God is. The people were crying about the water. And what did he tell Moses to go do? He told Moses to go over, stand on the rock, strike the rock, and water would then pour out of the rock and they'd be taken care of. Didn't he? Yeah. Amen. Now for all of you inside the box thinkers, that is impractical and that cannot happen. But God doesn't work inside that box. Water from a rock, rock, that's impossible. That's outside. That's, that can't happen. Water from the rock is outside the box. You see, folks, the God that I serve, there's nothing impossible for Him. Amen. Let me say that again. For the, some of y'all didn't hear me there. The God I serve, there's nothing impossible with Him. Alright, I thought you was with me. See, the God I serve not only provides water, He also provides quail and manna if I need it. 
He provides everything I need. And that's outside the box for, for them to walk out and find manna on the ground to get up and eat for the day. To have quail delivered to them. That's outside the box. See, the problem is, is we're so used to thinking inside the box that we don't believe God can work outside that box anymore. We saw there in Isaiah where they didn't have enough money to buy food, but God said, come on anyhow. Why? Because I'm going to make a way for you. See, when God starts working, everything becomes possible. Are you ready to think outside the box this morning? Yes. Do you have a faith that's in a box? Can you take your faith and can you wrap it up inside a nice clean box and you can wrap it up and put it under a tree just like a Christmas present? Do you have a faith that you... I want to tell you, do you have a faith that you can explain everything about? If you do, you don't have a faith that's found here because I'm going to tell you, nobody can explain everything in here. Amen. Yeah. If you have a faith that's all wrapped up and you've got it all figured out, I need to come and meet with you because I need to learn something. I'm serious. Why? Because my God is an outside-the-box God. So how do we move outside from inside the box to outside the box? And that's the last point. Think about this. Those in business who speak of thinking outside the box, it's the ideal of being more creative. It's the ideal of being more original. It's the ideal of being more revolutionary. It's the ideal of being more daring. It garners with it an ideal of taking risks for the sake of ingenuity and profits. Business people pay big bucks to people that think outside the box. How many of you have a Facebook account? Can I tell you, that was a lame brain ideal that was outside the box years ago. Amen. How many of y'all think it's a neat thing that you can FaceTime or video chat with somebody on your phone around the world for free? <laughs> Can I tell you, somebody told the, the developers of that, that's lame right. Can I tell you what was thought about the first cell phones? The first cell phones, it was said that they would never catch on. I want you to, if you're above the age of 10 and don't have a cell phone, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Five. But they're not catching on. <laughs> no, they are. But we were told, they were told, the inventors were told they wouldn't catch on. But somebody paid big books to have it developed. And now every one of us is so dependent upon it. We don't go anywhere without it. And if we do, we're looking for it everywhere we, every time we turn around. We're wishing we could get on Facebook or we could get directions of where we're going. Amen. But see, that's moving outside the box. So let me ask you, where are you spiritually with God and where's your faith? Is it inside the box that you've got it all figured out and you and God have this understanding that you know what? God, when I get there, we'll handle it then. I'm going to tell you, God says you won't handle it then. If you don't handle it now, you won't ever handle it. He said, you've got to make the decision now. And that's stepping outside the box of faith. That's stepping outside the box of where you control things and allow Him to control it. Because see, over 2,000 years ago, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins. I want to tell you, that's outside the box thinking. He then died on that cross and He put Him in a tomb. Now can I tell you, that's inside the box thinking. Because everybody went there. But I want to tell you, on three days He rose again and come out of that and that's outside the box thinking. Amen. 
You see, God is outside the box. But if you think you've got it figured out and you can be good enough to get there, I want to tell you, you're going to stay in that box. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be real frank and honest with you this morning. You think you've got it figured out and you're not going to ever accept Jesus? Then you're going to die in that box and that box is going to be a place that you're going to go. And that box without Christ is going to a place called hell. It's going to a place that's separated from God for all of eternity. But I want to tell you, you can stay in the box because God allows you to make that choice. Or you can step out of the box of yourself and you can step outside the box of, of your dependency upon you doing things or, or having this agreement that you're going to do enough good to outweigh the bad. Or you can come to God through Jesus Christ today. Where are you in your relationship with the Lord today? Are you right with God? Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior and Lord? If you hadn't, you need to today. But listen, I'm going to tell you, I know, I know most of you, and most of you say, you know what, I've got a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I've accepted Him. I've been, I, look, the old church word, I've been saved. I've been saved. Then let me ask you, is that salvation active in your life to cause you to serve Him day in and day out? And if it's not, I'm going to challenge you to come to Him today. Confess those things and come back to Him so that the relationship, you've already got a relationship with Him so the fellowship is restored. Through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you'd have your way. Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior of, your life, of their life, I pray that they'd come to know you. Lord, for those that may be here that have allowed sin to come in, things to come in, Father, that have separated them in fellowship with you, I pray that today they would confess those things and come back to you. Whatever you their need is, I pray. Lord, if there's somebody here that needs to say, you know what, I've got to step out of the box because I need God to work a miracle today. I need God to work a miracle in my life. I need God to work a miracle in my family. I need God to work a miracle in my kids. Lord, I pray that they'd come to you today and lay those things before your feet. Because, Lord, we are dead broke spiritually. But, Lord, you tell us to come to you and eat and to buy and to drink freely. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing a song of invitation. If God's laid on your heart something, you need to use this front area like an altar. You need somebody to pray with you. I'll be standing down front. Whatever your need is, would you bring it to the Lord today as we sing? Page number 177.
Let me tell you, just because we're closing the invitational song doesn't mean that God still can't work. Amen. If God's got something on your heart, maybe you don't feel like you can walk forward in front of everybody, but you want to talk about it. I want to tell you, just come behind me and tug on my shirt tail. I know what you mean. We'll go and we'll go sit over here in the cool. We'll sit in a chair. We'll sit down and talk. Any time today. I'd love to talk to you. Maybe you're going to say, Brother D, I'm not going to stay around. But I want to tell you, God can work in your car and in your home. Amen. Amen. But if God's calling you, listen to the call that He's placed upon you. Amen. 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 God bless you for being here. I do have a few things, a few instructions and announcements I need to make. First of all, um, there are no chairs over there because all of the chairs are here. If you can, take your chair with you. If you can't, don't burden yourself. We'll get some men to carry some chairs over there, okay? But if you can, take your chair with you when you go. All right? There, oh, when you get over there, there's fish and chicken and all the fixings. There's water and sodas and teas and drinks and all of that. There's more than what you can consume over there, okay? There are tables. There's all kinds of things set up. The food is, is ready over there. Is there anybody here that's allergic to fish? Allergic. Not that you don't like it, but that you're allergic to it. Because some of them don't like it. My wife, one of them. Okay? If you're allergic to it, I need to know. If not, because I was fixing the... I ain't going to tell you. I was going to send you first. Not now all of y'all are allergic. No, I'm just kidding. All right. When you go over, they've got everything set up. Take your chair. And uh, we're going to have the blessing on the food, and we'll make our way that away. Afterwards, we're gonna, we've got washers are going to be set up in here and horseshoes, and there's going to be uh, dominoes and all kinds of things in the, in the community center. And there's just going to be the volleyball set up over here. We're just going to have a great time this afternoon of fellowship. And so please stay around and, and, and be part of the afternoon with us. All right? Yes. She what? Okay. Miss McIntyre has lost a gold bracelet she had on earlier. They found it right there. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Thank you for coming and being a part of it. Enjoy the day. Let's have a blessing. Ask the Lord's blessing on the food. And uh, yes. That wasn't it. Okay, we still got a bracelet. That was, that was somebody else's. All right. Look around as you're going through the day. If you find a bracelet, please get it to me or, or Miss McIntyre or one of us, and we'll make sure we get it to her. All right? All right. Let's ask the blessing. Father, Just we ask your blessings upon the food. Use it for nourishment and strength for our body. Lord, our body to serve you. Lord, bless the afternoon. Bless everything that goes on. In Jesus' name, amen. You can put the handles up front if you want to on the stage area.